Ange, happy Easter. Thank you, mate. Um, I'm a Greek Orthodox. Mine's in about a month's time, but <laughs> appreciate it. How are we looking, uh, team news-wise, after the international break? Um, yeah, look, uh, first thing is, I guess, all the internationals got through unscathed. Um, most of them got some meaningful game time too, which is important. Uh, so they've all come back all good. And uh, in terms of their injuries, obviously Mickey was the one that missed the last game. He, he's trained, uh, he's trained the last couple of days and uh, available. International break, obviously, but there have been little bits of news. Obviously, a friendly arrangement of Newcastle in Melbourne a few days after the end of the season. With the Euros and the Copa America looming after that, can you understand there's been a bit of criticism over the friendly? Yeah, look, oh, I mean, I guess with all these decisions, there's always going to be um, kind of conjecture and, and scrutiny around why they're made. But, you know, I think from our perspective, like, like any club, you kind of weigh up the benefits and the costs of doing something. And, um, you know, we... One reason or another, we haven't had a lot of games this year and there's a unique opportunity for us to add a game at the end of the year. Um, I'm obviously part of that discussion and, and we are we're mindful of the players and and the schedule. Um, but like I said, when you, we weighed it all up, we thought it was still going to be really beneficial for us as a football club and uh, we've, gone that, we've gone that way. I know it was a disappointing night for Wales, but shots running on Sky Sports News the next day. Just Ben Davis in the middle of his Welsh teammates, really sort of five-minute, real passionate um, speech from him. Um, I've never seen that personally all the years I've been covering Tottenham. I mean, we kind of proud of him watching that. Yeah, look, absolutely. I mean, I love our players playing for their national teams and um, I know what it means to them and for them. Um, and, and look, Ben's an outstanding character. I mean, um, you know, you can, you can, I mean, I sense that straight away in terms of the way he carries himself, the way he thinks about the game, the way he thinks about his position in the game, um, you know, the influence he can have. And, um, you know, I think from my perspective, you know, the more of those kind of guys you can have in a dressing room, it, it helps you sort of make sure that the standards you want to create and the environment you, you want to create is is going to be the one where, where, where it can take us to another level. And Ben's certainly one of those. And, um, you know, he's been great for us every time we, he's played this year. Obviously, probably wanted to play a bit more. But um, at the same time, you know, it's a testament to his character that whenever he has played, he's been ready to play. and He trains the house down every day and, um, you know, disappointed for him, gutted for him. You know, obviously him and, and Brennan being in the team, but, you know, especially for him because you realise at some point in your career that, you know, these kind of tournaments uh, are eventually going to run out, the opportunity to qualify for them. So when, when you don't, um, you know, it, 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 it can be obviously, um, you know, pretty disappointing. Finally, and most important from me, Richarlison this week, speaking so openly. I, I remember speaking to you in September about it, but he's spoken this week. Really brave. A reminder, I suppose no one really knows what's going on. He, was, you know, he spoke openly about the post-World Cup and how much he struggled. Uh, it's not just Tottenham and Everton fans, but I think everyone, millions have watched it and, and, and think so highly of him. It, <laughs> What, what have you spoken to him in your thoughts? And it's just a reminder, isn't it? It doesn't matter who you are, how much you earn. We, we just don't know what's going on behind yeah, the post office. Yeah, absolutely. I think I've said before, you know, that you know, they, they strip it all back. They're all just human beings. And um, no, I haven't spoken to Richie, but, you know, I think, you know, Richie has really benefited from, you know, the support that does exist, uh, not just for him, but for, for others in the community. And I think, because he has benefited so directly, I think he's, you know, he's taken on the responsibility of, you know, trying to share that around now, and, and it always makes more of an impact when it is somebody, you know, who's higher profile or, or in a position where we think, well, you know, they shouldn't really have any problems, or, you know, we see it as a sign of weakness when they're looking for for help and support, and, and it's a credit to him um, that, you know, he, he could have dealt with this privately, obviously, um, <coughs> but I think the public aspect of it. Um, is a, is, a, is a brave decision for him, but more importantly, it's a great sort of, hopefully a conduit for others to, to reach out and, and seek help, um, you know, when it's required. And as I said, the, there's always a balance to these things. And, you know, whether that's Richie or anyone else, is that you always understand that, you know, for all of us, we've got challenges in our lives, we've all got problems, and, you know, that there's help you can get out there, and, and it shouldn't be hopefully get to the point where it's so overwhelming that it, it, it takes over everything else you do and uh, you know, like I said credit to Richie he, he's, see, he's sought help he's got help uh, the right help and, and now he wants others to, to, to also benefit from it Hi 
end. Um, obviously, you've got your, your full squad back together again now. Do you feel that the two-week break came at a good time off the back of the, the, the loss to Fulham? I mean, what have you seen from your players in training today? Perhaps was it a good time to reset the, the emotions after that loss? Um, uh, well, I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, every international window is the same. You know, you kind of you play the game, the last game before it, and whether it's good, bad, or otherwise, you know, that you know, by the time they leave the dressing room, they're gone for, for a good 10 days. So, um, yeah, you know, we use that time best we can with the guys we've got back here, and then you kind of uh, hope, like I said, they get through their international commitments unscathed. And once they get back, the key thing for us then is to, to make sure that when they're back, they're back with us. Um, and you know, part of that process is to review the, the last game, go through it, give them the feedback they need and then look ahead. And um, training was good today. Training was, I mean, it's the first day we've had everyone in today and uh, they look good, they look bright and uh, ready to go. What has been the feedback from yourself and, and the coaching staff to your players ahead of the game against Luton? Look, a tough game. Um, you know, uh, Luton have been ultra competitive all year. Um, you know, they've always, um, in every game, Really made it hard for the opposition. I think Rob's done a, a brilliant job this year. Um, you know, f considering all the, the challenges they've had and the challenges they currently got with injuries. Uh, like I said, every game I watch them, they're always competitive. They always make make it difficult for the opposition, and uh, <coughs> it'll be no different for us tomorrow. And we just got to be ready for it. Um, we're back at home. You know, obviously the last game was disappointing, but uh, we want to make sure that we, we get back to playing our football and uh, and be at our best because that's what's going to be needed. Just staying on Luton finally, I mean, obviously you beat them 1-0 back in October and Rob Edwards had said, has said that um, his team are going to go on the, on the all-out attack uh, tomorrow. So what can you take from that first game against Luton this season going into tomorrow's one? Look, it was a different game. Uh, you definitely take away the competitiveness and how hard it is to play, you know, at that venue with, with a crowd so close to the pitch. Um, we obviously had Eves uh, Basuma sent off and, you know, it was a different kind of victory for us. Um, but you can see on that day that, you know, that, they're an ultra competitive team, and you, know, you hear a lot of coaches say they'll they'll go out all out and attack. But you know, Rob backs up his words with actions. You know, when I've seen them play, whether that's against you know City or, or Liverpool or, or Arsenal or any of the top clubs, they've still gone out and, and, and been really aggressive. So they're going to be aggressive against us, and we're going to be ready for it. Um, can I just very quickly check on Richardson. He didn't play any minutes for Brazil. Is he okay, fitness-wise? Yeah, he's okay. He's, he's had a bit of a knee, niggle that we've kind of been managing him, and I think Brazil managed him. But he trained today, and uh, he feels good, so he's available. Um, back on Ben Davies. He got his UA for a licence this week. Um, I mean, I think he wants to do his pro licence before he finishes playing as well. You've obviously someone that's given a lot of young coaches or opportunities. Um, just destroyed the chair. There. <laughs> so, yeah. um, he's not getting my job, mate. He's got a, he's got a bit of a weight to go. Yeah. Bit, so. I mean, essentially, kind of, can you spot people like Ben quite early on when you know a player can be a manager going forward? Not really. It's it's hard. But what you do need is, you know, especially, you know, I think I've said before that the the demands on coaching and being a manager are greater than they ever have been and you've got to be really committed to it and part of that process is obviously doing your badges which are not which is not easy it requires a huge time commitment a financial commitment um, and that's kind of the first part of it and then you know you, you're not necessarily going to start at the top it would be great if we all did but you know you, you've got to put in some hard yards there and so for me it, it, it's it's one thing to sort of be you know, really passionate about it and, and sort of wanting to explore the possibility of it. But as I've said to many players, if you think it's an extension of your playing career, it's nothing like it. It's a totally different experience. But, you know, like I said, part of that process is is making sure you try and gain as much knowledge as you can along the way. And, you know, Ben's already showing those qualities. You need to have a constant curiosity about, you know, getting better and, and trying to improve yourself and, uh, you know, he, he, it's a good place for him to start, but I still think he's got you know, a bit in his locker in terms of his playing, and uh, you know, I'll be making sure that that's still his main priority. Um, kind of similar-ish lines. Uh, Dejan Kulusevski had to deliver like, a bit of an impromptu team talk to the Sweden squad, and he's admitted that he kind of nicked bits of your team talk that you've given. Mm. Kind of, how does that make you feel? Does it kind of make you feel you've made an impact? Or? It's okay if they win. I, I, <laughs> I wouldn't be happy if he was... Uh, Using my words, and they didn't. Now look, at, look. You, you kind of, you hope. You, it's not always the case, but you hope when you talk, people are listening. Um, and 
you know, you hope that you can make an impact on them from a, not just a football perspective, from from a life perspective as well. And, and like I said, sometimes, um, you know, sometimes they listen, sometimes they don't. Um, sometimes there's a, probably a valid reason why they don't listen because I can talk some garbage myself. So, um, but if they can take away stuff that's positive, I think that's um, yeah, it's great for me. But uh, more importantly, you know shows me that you know, at least I'm getting their attention uh, most of the time. And uh, Christian Romero said this week that he would like to play at the Olympics if possible. Obviously you have the Copa America as well. Is it? I know obviously you like players to play for their country. Is there any concern that any lack of rest you might get this summer? Yeah, look, with all those things, you know, I mean, the Olympics is a little bit of a, of a different issue because, <laughs> you know, clubs aren't obliged to, to, to let players go for the Olympics. And, you know, from that perspective, we have a little bit more of a say in it than, than the kind of other internationals. And, um, and certainly from our behalf as a club, we, we'll always be looking at kind of making sure that there's there's a balance there. And, um, you know, he hasn't, he hasn't spoken to me about it. No one's spoken to me about it. But I guess... Uh, pretty strong advice would be that, you know, uh, with the Copper America uh, at the same time um, and, you know, hopefully have us having, gearing up for a big season next year, I'd, I'd be suggesting rest is a better policy. Just very quickly, because I've just remembered it, Rodrigo Bensenker said this week he's been playing with a broken toe for last month. Mm. This just kind of showed what a warrior he is. Yeah, it's breaking small toe, you know. It's, <laughs> he's got nine others. Um, you know, it's, um, I, I don't think, you know, I think no one can question Rodrigo's uh, courage with what he's had to deal with recently. It's one of those things, but you know he, he didn't want to stop playing, and you know, medical advice was he good to keep playing. So he's he's, he's still been training and playing. He hasn't missed he hasn't missed a session as far as I can see. And uh, yeah, I think I think it's better now anyway. So he's fine. Hi, Ange. Um, I just wanted to um, go back to the Fulham game. I mean, when you reflected on that, what did you sort of see? What were the things you saw that you didn't sort of like about that performance? Oh, there was, there was a whole range of things. I think I said after the game, we just, you know, we didn't work as hard as we have been in other games. It was probably the first game this year where I ever felt we were, our competitive levels were where they should have been. And, um, you know, when they're not, you're going to you're gonna pay a price. And, and we did on the day. I thought Fulham were good. Um, you know, it's always it's a tough venue anyway. They're, they're, they're really good at home, and we just didn't um, reach certain levels, uh, both in the physical aspect of the game, which, like I said, we, we've been really consistent in that this year. Um, you know, whilst our, you know, our actual play and our performances have fluctuated a little bit, our competitive level has always been really good. I just don't, didn't think it was at the levels it needed to be. So, you know, we kind of addressed that with the guys, and, um, you know, uh, like I said, um, we're going to have to get back up to where we have been for, for a tough game tomorrow. I um, just wanted to talk about the Premier League fixture list. I mean, you've got 10 games left, seven weeks of the season, but two of those games, Chelsea away and Man City home, you actually don't know when they're going to be. How sort of unhelpful is that kind of uncertainty which you wouldn't sort of normally associate with the so-called best league in the world? Well, yeah, I mean, I guess, um, you know, it, it, it's been, oh, look, I think I said before, I, it's been a real weird season from that point of view. Of just there hasn't been any real consistency or flow to our season. Some of it self-inflicted because obviously we didn't have, you know, long cup runs. We weren't in Europe. Um, but it just feels like we've always had some sort of disruptions, you know, weekends off or, you know, you know midweek games at unusual times, uncertainty. So it's just been that kind of season for us. We've just sort of got to get on with it at the end of the day. Like I said, we know we've got 10 games to go. We know when the last game is and we'll have to play the other ones in between and just be ready for them.